Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. If this is your first time to my YouTube channel, they call me Flex and I do Mercedes how-to videos. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade the command screen on your W204 facelift Mercedes C-Class to the brand new 11 inch Android screen. So you guys are wondering, where did I get this screen? So I got the screen from a company called DMP Car Designs. It's ran by my buddy Daniel. And Daniel is actually a huge 204 enthusiast. You guys might see his car online. It's a preface of white 204 that actually has custom headlights and a one-of-a-kind custom front bumper. I think it looks pretty cool. Daniel is really big in the 204 community in Malaysia. He installs it on a daily basis on pre-facelift 204s, facelift 204s, I see probably five or six pictures every day on his Facebook of someone happy with a brand new install. And he also does a lot of customization as well. He's actually in the process of producing a really cool, unique taillight for the 204. So that's coming soon. So here's a quick message from Daniel. Hey, what's up guys? Daniel here and I'm from DMP Car Design. We are selling and run screen and some cool stuff for your love car. And please check out with my website, like my Facebook page, and follow my Instagram, Flex, and hope to enjoy the screen. If you guys are interested in getting this screen or other customized parts, feel free to reach out to Daniel. I'll leave his contact information in the description below. Okay guys, it's time to show you guys how I did this. So here's what you get inside the kit. First and foremost, you get the beautiful screen. You get the holder for the screen and that comes with two screws to mount. This cable plugs into the screen and these two connectors will be going to your stock radio. And then you also get a USB cable with a 3.5 millimeter jack these will run to the center console. If you don't have an auxiliary plug for this, it does come with an adapter piece if needed. Next, you also get another wire here. This plugs into the screen as well. This plugs into your backup camera. And then you also get another USB cable. This is for updating the software on the screen down the road. And then you get a GPS receiver and two Wi-Fi receivers. Um, you really only need one of these, but I'm just going to install all two while I'm at it. So it should be pretty straightforward to install. Let's get to it. Before we head to the car, I'm just going to tidy up some cables just so it's for a cleaner install using some electrical tape. First thing you want to do is remove the center trim and the center vents. You're going to be removing it with a trim removal tool. Start on the right side and slowly pry up. Just make sure you take your time so you don't break anything. Now once that right side is loose, you're going to have to remove the center vents. They're held on by two catches inside so you're going to have to pull those in to remove the vents. Here's the vent, there's one catch here and one catch on the right. And you have two holes on the side to access those catches through the vents. We're gonna be pulling them in using a 90 degree pick tool. So all you need to do is insert the pick tool into the hole, twist it up, push it forward, twist it down and pull in the catch and now you can pull the center vents right off from the dash. Now 
Now you can slide the grip covers towards the screen and they should pop right off. And that will give you access to two screws holding the screen in place. But before we remove those two screws, we need to remove the bottom and top plastic trim pieces that's holding the gauge trim in place that we need to lower. Just use a pry tool and pry them up slowly and the bottom and plastic covers should pop right off. Now we can use a T20 Torx bit and loosen the two screws. You don't need to completely remove them. Now we want to pry the gauge cover off. Pry from the top on the left first and then the center area. and you want to pull it with equal force and lay it down so you can have access to the connectors on the back of the screen. Go ahead and remove the two connectors on the back of the screen using a flathead screwdriver. And once that's done, you can easily pull the screen away and set it aside until we do the reinstall. Now to remove the radio, we need to remove two T20 Torx screws. With the two screws removed, you want to take your screwdriver and push down where the screws were located. This will unlock the radio and you'll be able to slide it right out. Make sure you remove this lower right clip before you pull the radio completely out from the dash. Now carefully pull the radio out and we're going to have to first remove the fiber optic line and then we'll remove the larger black connector to the radio. Be extra careful when you're removing the fiber optic line. You don't want to damage that at all. So once you get it out, kind of set it aside so it's out of the way. And to remove the big black clip, just reach on the bottom, pull on this little lever, this latch, and then it should unlock and you can slide it right out. Now grab the radio cable from your kit. The male end is gonna plug into the female end of the cable that we just removed from the radio and latch that together so it's nice and tight. And then the other end will plug directly into the radio. Now reinsert the fiber optic line. Make sure it's connected to the two spots that it was originally placed. On the other end of that cable, we're gonna slide the connector that goes to the screen up through the middle, or you can go through the right side of the opening and pull the cable through. But we really need it all the way up to where the screen can reach. So I'm using this plastic tube that I ran from the top around the side and then I'm gonna take that end and then tape it here so I can pull everything through so it can go up top.
I pulled enough of the cable through because the screen is going to be protruded or you're going to need some extra slack. Uh, but this is the other end which is the 3.5 millimeter audio jack and a USB. I already taped this up but we're going to have to run it all the way to the center console where it plugs in to uh, that connector right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the other cable in the kit. We're going to fish this connector up top and then we're going to route the other side which is a USB cable around the right side and have it connected or taped up with the line that we were just talking about. So here I'm just fishing it through the right side until it comes out of the center hole. I'm going to pull it through. So here's the cable end that we just ran. It has a Farca end. You're going to have to plug that to the blue connector that we pulled off the original screen. Don't worry about the black connector. We're not going to be using that at all. So let's connect those two uh, Farca connections. Now back to the USB connection and the 3.5 millimeter jack. I'm gonna tape all these guys together so we can route it through the right side and we're gonna have it exit right under the passenger foot area. I'm gonna remove the three torque screws that are holding that black panel in place. Now I just pull the panel down So here's the USB taped up to the other USB cable that has the 3.5 millimeter jack. We're gonna fish this through the center hole uh, through the right side so it exits out the bottom. So I pulled the tape off the cable so the both USBs can be together, put the cover back on, and now we're going to have to route this 3.5 jack along the edge all the way to the center console. So I connected them together externally like this, but if you want to run it for a cleaner install, you'd have to remove the center console and basically insert the 3.5 jack via the bottom. Now we can start pushing the radio back in, but make sure you connect the little plug on the lower right. I basically snuck all the cables in the lower part of the opening so I have room for the radio when I slid it in. Once the radio is fully in, we're going to reinstall those two torque screws and the radio should be fully in place. Next, let's install the GPS cable and the two Wi-Fi cables as well. Just peel off the tape, insert it in the opening, just stick it anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Now we have all the connections ready to plug into the brand new Android screen.
Now we can start putting everything back together. Let's start by removing the old screen from the gauge cover. It's just held on by some tiny torque screws. We want to pull the cables through the opening and line up the bottom first and then swing the top into the opening and clip it in. And we'll reinstall the top cover. That should snap back into place. And then we will install the lower cover. Now we want to grab the plastic bracket holder for the screen. We're going to remove these two black covers so that way we can put a screw in to mount it onto the dash. Just lift it up with a flathead screwdriver and it should pop right off. You want to sneak the small clip and the three smaller wires through the left opening and then on the larger opening on the right that's for the larger connector for the screen and then line up the plastic holder and push it into place install the two screws included in the kit Everything is nice and firm, you can put the covers back on. And now we can pull these covers off the screen and make our connections, our five connections on the screen to the five connectors that we have here. I'm going to start connecting the GPS and the two Wi-Fi receivers first. Then I'll install the smaller clip and then I will install the larger clip. I didn't give it enough slack so I have to hold up the screen to connect it. And once all the connections made, push it in so everything's nice and clean. And you want to grab the screen and basically it mounts from the top down and clicks right into place. And that's it. So the screen measures about 11 inches. The viewable area is probably 10 point something, uh, but it's really large and it actually sticks out, not like the original screen. So that way you can have access to being able to touch it out without reaching so far in. Uh, let me show you the backside and how it's mounted. It's actually really secure. It's not gonna go anywhere because when you put it on, you have to snap it into place and the bracket on the back is screwed onto the old uh, spots where the original screen was, so it's on really sturdy. So here's a different angle of the screen. As you can see, it sticks out a little more. And that bracket piece, that plastic bracket piece fits in perfectly and nicely. And it's super sturdy. And the install is actually really clean. everything looks like it's OEM. I'm pretty happy with the physical attributes of this screen. Okay, so let's talk about the features of the screen. Overall, I wanna give this screen about a eight out of 10. It is an international product. So the previous generation models actually had kilometers and Celsius. This actually has the upgrade so you can put miles per hour and Fahrenheit but you also run into some screens where you still see the kilometers per hour. But some of those options you might not even use. So those little quirks, they're okay. 
Uh, you're gonna find them in this screen. This screen is not gonna be 100% perfect for the US market, but for what it does, I think it's well worth the money. So the first thing I wanna talk about is if you want to use your old screen, you can. There's actually a feature right there. That's your old screen. And all your command knobs, command functions, GPS, backup camera, all still works just like it was your normal screen. But if you want, you can go into the Android screen and you can use your scroll wheel and buttons as well and be able to navigate through the system. The system also hooks up to your backup camera, your stock backup camera. So if you put it on reverse, the camera will pop right up. If you have an aftermarket camera, you can actually put a setting in there so you can take advantage of the dotted lines that helps you reverse. You now have access to Google Maps, um, your old car screen. You get a really high quality video player, music player, and apps. You can go online if you have it tethered to your phone using Wi-Fi or you have a Wi-Fi connection. You can have access to the internet and be able to download a bunch of stuff. Here's a quick demo of the apps. So right now I'm gonna go to Google Chrome. I actually have this tethered to my smartphone that's giving off Wi-Fi and I just accessed YouTube. As you can see, it's just like surfing on a tablet, which is really cool. And I can watch any of these videos if I would like. And there is that handsome devil. You have Bluetooth, of course, Bluetooth music, uh, car information, that's the settings for some of the screen. If you have a DVR, you can also plug that to this so it can record all the time. Great if you have a dash cam. And then it also have a driving screen here, which will give you the RPM and the speed. So if I step on the gas, you can see it's responsive with my RPMs and it matches my car. It reads out the speed when you drive, but unfortunately this screen is still kilometers per hour. Again, this is one of those little quirks that I don't really use, so I'm not really concerned about it at all. So overall, I'm really happy with the screen. I give it probably about an eight out of 10 based on some of the things we just reviewed. It is the updated Android version, so it is gonna be a different user experience and better one than the previous model that was released for the pre-facelift W204s. And there you have it, guys. A really cool install to your 204 Mercedes. Doesn't matter if it's a pre-facelift or a facelift, Daniel has access to all the screens. So if you're interested in buying this and installing it on your car, definitely feel free to reach out to Daniel. Again, I left his contact information in the description below. As always, if you like the video, hit like and make sure you subscribe. I'll see you next time.